Hey everyone, welcome to Medication Monday. This is where we go over a different EMT drug that we administer out in the field. We do it specifically in EMT drug card format. As always, follow your local protocol and scope of practice. Enjoy. Today's medication is called Manitol, and Manitol is also known by its brand name, which is Osmotrol. Manitol falls under the class of osmotic diuretics. The mechanism of action of Manitol is that it causes a reduction in the osmotic pressure in the blood and blood vessels. This inhibits the reabsorption of water and electrolytes and also increases urine output. And it also causes renal dilation, so it'll increase the blood flow to the kidneys. Your indications are going to be cerebral edema, increased intracranial pressure, rhabdo, and blood transfusion reactions. As always, stay within your scope of practice and abide by your local protocol. And just as a little disclaimer, Manitol is a paramedic level medication, but you're typically not going to see it given in the 911 EMS setting. You may see it given in flight medicine or interfacility transports or long distance transports, etc. So the medication is usually already on an infusion pump with a predetermined dosage and rate by the doctor. Your adult and pediatric dose is 0.5 to 1 gram per kilogram and and really the main differences between the, the adult and pediatric dose that I've noticed is just the rate at which it goes into the patient. Uh, your contraindications are going to be hypotension, pulmonary edema, severe dehydration and hypovolemia, active brain bleeds, and that is one that I kind of wanted to go into in just a moment, and congestive heart failure. Some adverse reactions that you may see with mannitol are headache, nausea, vomiting, uh, confusion, seizures, pulmonary edema, and tachycardia, and a drug interaction that you may see with mannitol is toxicity with digoxin. And how it's supplied, it's usually 50 grams in a 250 milliliter bag or 100 grams in a 500 milliliter bag of a 20% solution. And this is for your IV infusion. So it typically ends up being 200 milligrams per milliliter. Just a few side notes about mannitol. The typical onset, if you're using it for the reduction of ICP, is 15 minutes. But if you're using it for the diuretic effect, which I will say mannitol is one of the least used diuretics, but if it is being used for that, it's one to three hours. Um, mannitol can crystallize at low temperatures and an inline filter should always be used with mannitol. So I just wanted to kind of go into why mannitol isn't typically used in the 911 EMS setting. And that is because there is no access to CT scans out in the field. And so one of the contraindications of mannitol is an active brain bleed. So there's no way for us to know if the brain is still bleeding um, or the bleeding has stopped. So that is why you really don't see mannitol given in the 911 EMS setting. And when you take mannitol on an inner facility transport, most hospitals will go ahead and already have a Foley in place for you because of the diuretic effect. Anyway, guys, remember to abide by your local protocol and always stay within your scope of practice. This video is purely informational for those in the EMS field and never meant to be used in the place of local protocol, medical direction, or formal education. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.